maybe another reason why some people are so quick to go to a stranger, especially a faceless one, because online, a lot of times you don't know these people. Like, why is it like these days it seems that that is the first step versus saying that, you know what, Annie, let's sit down, let's have a conversation. To have to have the trust and the safety with the self, to be able to have a, a difficult conversation with someone else, it usually is an indicator of what I call the layers of insulation of belonging, the, the six layers of belonging, which are layers of insulation. We have ourself, we have those that we live with. So if we're an adult, maybe it's our spouse, our children, or if we have a dependent parent, the people that live in our household, then we have our community. Well, we have our friends and family, so ourself, our um, household, our friends and family. So that may be our parents that we don't live with, our, our siblings that have their own families, our closest friends, our emergency contacts, then our community, then our country. And then the hard shell around all of that is our belief system, whether it's religious or spiritual. So we have all of this insulation. When we have really strong insulation, we don't have a problem with conflict. It's when we have missing layers of insulation that um, having those missing layers, we don't have something solid to hold on to. So we seek the, we seek social media to do that for us, to validate our existence, to to give us the the ego boost or the dopamine hit that we're seeking because we're not getting it from our inner layers. And then I guess that could also mean why you see so many people who behave that way or maybe who are always in a state of suffering. Like you probably know those people, right? Like they always yeah. seem to have something go wrong, <laughs> yeah. right? In in their life, but they travel in packs. Yeah. Right. So I wonder, maybe that's why they stick together because if I'm going through something today, which is going to be resolved next week. I can always count on Annie next week to be going through something so I can live through her. Mm -hmm. Right. I, do you see that happening as well? Yeah. Yeah. We, we, I look at it like trees. There are trees that have really deep roots, generationally deep roots. Grandma, grandparents live near parents, siblings. They all live in the same town, deep roots. And then we have trees that don't have deep roots. So they rely on each other but they're shallow roots. So like some of the tallest trees we know we have have shallow roots, but because they grow so close to each other, they insulate each other at a lateral level rather than a generational level. So yeah, like-minded people are going to start to gather together, but it becomes an echo chamber. We don't have the layers, the generational wisdom insulating us, and we don't have the, the layers of our uh, geographic space, our household, our community, our country insulating us. So then we start to get too alike in our grouping and it doesn't give us the diversity for growth. I saw that recently and someone mentioned something. They're part of this group and it's probably a, quite a large group, maybe about 10, 11 people. And I was having a conversation with this person because I guess apparently they weren't um, able to Something happened, like there was something happened. They're sharing the story. And I told them something very similar. I said, you know, what's interesting is that there's you guys, as this group expanded from, let's say, maybe four or five people until it hits about double digits, which is about 10. I was like, now you have people with not only who have similar hobbies and likes, but now they're navigating the world the same way. And I said, one of the dangerous things in, in this life is you can unite people, I believe, in two major ways, hate and love. Yeah. W right. When you unite someone with hate, you always have to find something to hate or dislike. It has to be a villain. It has to be a villain, right? When it's love, the love will grow into something else. And then exactly. And then when it expands... If someone were to go off and do their thing, because it's united by love, you don't mind. What happened with this person is that they tried to go off and do their own thing, and then the group thought that it was an attack on them because now there's distance between the between them, right? Instead of every day they're talking in their group chat, it may be every four days, 
out of the seven, every five days, because they have something else. And I told this person, I was like, here's going to be the, the danger of this. Everyone is single now, right? Everyone is chronically single. Everyone is united by their hatred of dating, right? They're either divorced or whatever the case is, right? It's so easy to hate dating these days. Yeah. Every single person that finds a healthy relationship is going to have a conflict within the group. The person said no. I was like, watch. Time will tell. And they asked me why. I was like, here's why. Once you replace what is unifying the group, you're like everyone else outside of this group. And by default, they have to treat you differently. Because now they can't bash, oh, marriage, is, marriage sucks. Well, I'm married. Eventually, you're not going to want to listen to that all day long, right? So this person ended up getting in a relationship and they wanted to spend more time. So the other people felt a certain type of way. And that person, and then the person they're, they're dealing with told them, like, hey, I see something strange going on here. So basically, they're saying the same thing that I was saying earlier on. And now the person got defensive. And the person said, well, this is how it's going to be because because they're starting to pull away, they started to feel guilty because now they're getting shamed. Now they're getting ridiculed. You know, that person turned around and ended their relationship and ended up going back to the group. And I said to someone else who told me this story because the person didn't have the heart to tell me as I was said, that person, unfortunately, will always be single and reliant on them. And God forbid that they ever, the other people ever grow up and find a relationship because they're going to feel so dumb the sacrifices that they made in vain. What are your thoughts on people who do something like that who may not regret it today, but quite possibly will regret it tomorrow? When I hear that story, a few things came to mind. One, how unfortunate is it is that people have stopped taking risks. They've they, they, they've got their story and that story has become truth to them and they're no longer seeking to take risks because the truth, like I, the first few years after being divorced, I should not have been dating. I had way too much healing, but I didn't know I had trauma to know I needed to do healing, but I needed to do healing. And until I came out of the healing and, th and it might be for the next 40 years that I continue to heal, I, I wouldn't have seen how I was perpetuating, I would have been a member perpetuating in that group. And all of the moments that would have been stunted because I wasn't focused on growth to be a better human, better person, I would have been in that same stunted space. And I so that group to me reflects unhealed wounds. And it also reflects a fear of growth. Leaving the comfort of this situation to risk feeling vulnerable and experiencing love. Mm -hmm.